you know, I'm kidding. You could always come Actually, back in the backyard. <laughs> good afternoon, gentlemen. How are we doing? Doing good. Doing real good, guys. Good yeah. to see you. Glad to be back at it another week here. Um, today, we're going to talk about security policies. Uh, before we get into anything, we are the reboot. We meet Wednesdays, 1 30 Eastern Time. Uh, my name is Brian Bradshaw. I'm with BNLPC Solutions based out of Long Island, New York. My name is Dave Groot, and I am with Windstar Technologies based out of Culpeper, Virginia. And David Luft with LDD Consulting out of Albuquerque, New Mexico, the green chili capital of the world. <laughs> Never gets old. That's right. I love it. <laughs> uh, security policies. Um, so we, we tend to, uh, in, in, in this little podcast that we do, we do tend to you know, dive more into the technical topics just by nature. Uh, this today's conversation, however, is technical in, in content, but, but applicable to every single business out there. So this is something that, that what, what we're, our audience is, is any, any business owner, CEO, CFO, whatever your title is, if you have any insight into how the business functions and operates, security policies are something that's been around forever. Uh, and, and we're seeing more and more today, the need to not only make sure that you have policies in place, make sure that they're updated, tested, vetted, and, and et cetera. Um, some of these policies, I don't know, you want to get right into, you know, uh, some of this, the easier ones to, to, um, to talk about in rights. Uh, we have a whole list here. So can, can I just say a couple of real quick yeah, sure. points of, of, of topics there? So I think what I find when we're dealing with our clients and in the, in the businesses out there, uh, bringing mm -hmm. them, you know, a security program or bringing compliance in or just meeting the needs of their cyber insurance, what have you, policies are always coming into play, right? And, and I also see that that's oftentimes the part that the company doesn't have a firm handle on as far as cybersecurity goes. Most businesses in many cases have some form of an employee handbook and they have some kind of policies going on because there's, there's come a need at some point to do that. And that's the same way I think they should look at it from a cybersecurity perspective. Don't make this a difficult task for yourself. Start with a policy that just says you have to be on your computer between nine to five or whatever that is. Or, you know, I mean, it can be simple. I know that that's not a policy, but I'm just saying, like, it doesn't have to be complete. It needs right. to be started. Good point. And then that's you got to visit it occasionally. And then as incidents come up or you think of things or what you're doing with your team and you're talking about this stuff and you identify other places to improve it, go in and make those improvements over time because it's never going to stop it's going to change your business is going to change the threats are going to change the technology is going to change everything's going to keep changing so it's never done and that sounds like way tiring and everything but if you just check them once a year you can kind of just keep them updated and then have everybody trained up on them i'll leave it at that no that's a that's a excellent point david i mean and that pretty much sums up the the, the purpose of, of why we're talking about it because it's not this doesn't have to be this daunting, overwhelming task that you have to assign a body to that's just or a resource that's just going to suck away, you know, time and energy from them. That's that's not the case. I think right. it's important to understand that um, there's I mean, there's a myriad of, of, of policies and, and, and based on your business, you may be required to have these policies or some of them in place already for whether it be compliance or uh, any, any you know, there could be a myriad of reasons why, but, um, and, and if you don't, it could be even because of you know, insurance, cyber insurance, you're required to hold certain policies. And if you say, yes, we have this, yes, we have that. And, and you do suffer, you're unfortunate enough to suffer a breach. And then they say, all right, well, let's look at your incident response plan. You're like, well, I don't have one. Well, you said you had one. So now you not only committed insurance fraud, we're denying your claim and you're, you know, so it just snowballs and, and right. uh, it doesn't need to. Um, so one of the big ones, that, and I think we've talked about it in the past, is is an incident response policy or plan, um, which are synonymous in name. But it's really, um, and, and to your point, David, keep it simple. Uh, incident response plan is going to outline an, a potential incident breach, and, and you could break it down into levels one, two, and three based on severity. Start with level one, and the, you know something that um, you know maybe. Uh, there was, um, you know, someone's password got compromised or, or there's, uh, you know, someone got in through multi-factor and someone approved it and they didn't mean to. Something that's a little 
uh, less uh, evasive or intrusive, but um, what do you do in that situation? And you literally, you know, so I would suggest starting simple, maybe get like a soup starter and, and, and there's templates out there that can help and guide you and just you know, spend 15, 20 minutes on it, you know, a week until you actually have something written in there because that's what's going to save you. That's what these these policies are for. They're designed to um, not only educate you, your staff, your team, your vendors, whoever, however far it, it cascades down. It's designed to just walk you through that process and take away any of that 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 shock or that reactive behavior that that we that we just have, you know, ornately. That's just how we are. So take that and okay. Th so this incident happened. You pull out that piece of paper. Okay, this says I'm supposed to, you know, call this person, and, and you go through the exercise. And you can do it, you know, do a test once a year on on the, the different incidents. And you might find that the policy is ineffective, exactly. right, or the procedure Absolutely. that goes along with the policy. And and it's only through those response planning exercises that you're going to bring that to light. Right? Like that's where you're going to see that they're until or you get breached. But I mean, like, right. you know, I've gone through this with clients where, OK, we have a policy and, and, and it, you know, then you have a procedure behind it for several different tasks like remote access, passwords, password manager, that kind of thing. Right. And those the policies are the rules of the game. The procedures are how you play the game. So, you know, how do I how do I play the password manager game? Well, in this organization. The procedure to do that is to use the product of X, Y, and Z, and you do this, that, and the other, and you're allowed to store these kinds of things. And when you create a password, it has to be this, that, and, you know, like that's the procedure that we follow. Those are the steps. The policy is you have to have complex passwords. They have to be stored in an encrypted format in a password manager. Now that password manager might change. When it changes, the procedure changes, but the policy doesn't. Exactly. Right? So uh, that. You know, that's what you're working through these exercises for to bring to light where you need to have guidance for your people so they know. Because, look, when an incident takes place, part of the, the thing that we see all the time, who's the, what's the first thing you do? You got to call somebody, right? Most often it's going to be your cyber insurance or your attorney. Well, if those records are electronic and you just got ransomware, you're screwed. You don't have those numbers. And, and, and when you're in that event, it sounds like, oh, no problem. Go to Google, pull it up. Look, man, I'm sorry. When that's taking place in your business, your head is not where it's supposed to be. And you're not thinking rationally and you're looking for a corner. Like you need that stuff handy, ready. You got to go through it, test it, make sure it's there, use it, know where to find it so that it's available to everybody. And involve involve your staff in the in the collaboration and the creation of these policies because there's nothing better or more valuable than the input of your peers or the people that are going to, going to be responsible for kind of walking through these exercises with you. I mean, don't put it all on on yourself. We call them the stakeholders, right? There you go. They're the ones who you're messing with when you create a procedure <laughs> because yeah. they're the ones who you should ask yep. <laughs> for the, for yep. the procedure. How do yep. we do it today? Does that match the policy? Okay, maybe we need to adjust. But let's start with what we're doing today. We don't want to break the organization. We just want to protect it. So we have to make sure we're not, it's not the same procedure for every business. It's not the same policy for every business. It, it's about what's most important, prioritizing what's the most risk and how do we mitigate that? Yeah. And we do get a lot, um, not a lot, but fairly often, can you can you write this for us? And, and you know, nobody knows your business better than you. I mean, I could certainly give you some, you know, some starting points and, and some uh, bullet points. But but the the content is is organic for every business. And yep. it's going like you said, David, it's going to change. That's why you, you visit it, because um, and you should have a policy that says, you know, in your change management policy, when you do a change to this program, go ahead and update the incident response plan or whatever it is, wherever it belongs. Have it have right. them kind of and they, they, there there is a lot of um, synergy between the policies. There's there's overlapping, um, and that's great oh, as long as that overlapping is updated and you're not reading an outdated one. Well, all the controls, right? Like so, when when it comes to cybersecurity or and or compliance, primarily compliance, but we have controls that we're using. Those are either technical controls or administrative controls. The technical controls are the the, the products, the tools, the key, the password manager, the firewall, the the, the SASE product, the EDR, but the administrative controls are those policies and those procedures and the verification methods and the quarterly checks and the looking at the reports. And, and that's not going to be perfect 
first day out, you're going to start small. You're going to put something in place because today you have nothing. So something is more than what you have now. And then you just work it out and you keep revisiting six months, a year, a little bit at a time, a couple of hours. Don't, don't, this doesn't have to be a crazy investment unless you're under some real regulatory pressure that there's a deadline or something has to take place at a certain time. Like today's the day to start and it never ends. So just like everything else in your business, you're changing your procedures, your rules for how to handle phone calls. You're changing how to change marketing. Who's the sales? What's your target market? Who's your customer? How do we, all those things are the same. Just got to fit this into. Yeah. Yeah. Well said. Um, even uh, there's what we're seeing is we're, we're something simple is a, is a password policy for your company and for your, your, your 365. Have a documented password policy. And, and, and the silly as that sounds, that 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 counts. I mean, that's a policy that uh, you're, you're, we get asked all the time from from uh, if a client is going through an audit, we have to provide their, their documented password policy. And but it also needs a procedure to give it teeth. It and does. then it needs to be verified, right? You, you know, how many times did you go into a customer or a prospect, Brian, in the in the past, right? And they would have antivirus installed on a server and it would be pushed out to all the endpoints. Nobody knows if scans are taking place or updates are happening or where the status is of those things, but it's installed, so they're good. It must be working, right? right. Check, yeah, it's, yeah. It's in, it must be going well, but we're not verifying anything until, it's like the backup deal, right? Like, when do you verify a backup? <laughs> well, after you crash, right? Like, you know, like, you know, <laughs> you know yeah, it's yeah. too late, you know? And when do you realize it doesn't work? When you need it the most. That's, we, right. we love <laughs> the most. You know, that's not the time. You know, right. just like you're saying with the incident response. And I feel like we're lecturing all the time. And, and look, it's I, I really don't mean it to sound like that. It, it's it's truly just how to protect yourself. I mean, it's, it's important. It, and that's why we say it with emphasis. We do. I mean, that's one of the things that and, and why we kind of, you know, and we're seeing it more and more th only because we're our exposure. We have, you know, to, mm -hmm. to, you know, X amount of clients that we are dealing with that are that are getting uh, some requests for this information and then and then just through our own intelligence and our, our day to day, you know, operations, sure. we know, you know what, this is a good time or, you know, and, and we work with our clients and say, based on the time of year, you know what, after, after, you know, if you're an accounting firm, after your busy season, or if you're financial, after you tell us when you could give us, you know, an hour's worth of time to let you know where we want you to be a year from now. And we'll, we'll put those, you know, we'll, we'll give you the tools to, to start, that process and, and we'll check in with you uh and and that's been you know working to a certain extent it's still got to be driven by somebody and um the importance of understanding like kind of what we're doing today is just understanding um the 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 need is there and and the requirement is there but it's it's the the value that it adds um and it's all comes down to um to your what you said earlier, the, the cybersecurity framework. There's, it, it's we're, we're stemming off of that. We're, we're creating procedures and policies based on on security. I mean, this maybe you know what, twenty years ago, no, we'd, it would be a different conversation. You'd have policies. It would be a different conversation, though. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe maybe it was just an employee handbook that you had everyone sign off on. Uh, now it's just you have to. I mean, there's. I, I can tell you right now. I'm just looking at a list here. Uh, acceptable use policy, security awareness and training policy, change management, incident response plan, remote access, vendor management, password creation, network security. That's like, uh, shit, I can't even, I don't know what to do now, right? So well, then there's there's decommission, there's commission, there's encryption, there's onboarding, there's offboarding. There's, <laughs> I mean, they just, you, you can get crazy. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And, and look, they all have value, but start with a core set, right? Like just get your core set and then work your way up because some of them aren't necessary in your organization for your requirements, right? Exactly, exactly. Well, there's a lot of people that don't actually go through their cybersecurity checklist or they just think they do. And those that's a great place to start because if something does happen, any of your insurance, like you guys mentioned earlier. Yeah, well, that's a big uh, one. You know, I mean, the, uh, the PCI um, requirements, the new requirements are, are now rolling out, right? We have a little bit of a grace period still left before it becomes mandatory, but uh, that's increasing. And, and, and every every merchant is filling out an SAQ on some level every year. And they're clicking yes, checking yes, doing something on almost every box because it's the only way you can pass it. And 
the, the reality is you're not, you don't have the controls that they're requiring in place. And so I would advise to be very careful in that and, and, and take a good look at it. Policies are just, just big play. insurance companies are looking for reasons not to pay you. Yeah, that's exactly yeah, right. That's a big one. I mean, and, and, and what do you do? Right. I mean, so, so we can, we can, the old saying, you can lead a horse to water, right? Like we can, this is what we need to do, but you actually have to, to put the effort in and, and do it. And to your, like what we said earlier, the, the, um, it's don't make it difficult. It start with something. You'll have more today than you had yesterday. And that, that's, a, that's an accomplishment. Yep. I'll, I'll make a statement and, and it's not a guarantee by any means, but it certainly, it rings true. And, and it, it's like this. If you can dis, if you can display a concerted effort on the part of your organization to be doing the right things and to be verifying that those things are taking place and to be working towards a posture of security and a breach takes place, you're far more likely to get your insurance company to work with you than if you're just ignoring it and you're being basically blatantly negligent. They're not going to listen to that and they're not going to care. And so that's the difference, right? With our clients, we take the perspective of, look, we can do everything. We, you can follow every piece of advice I give you, and I still cannot promise you that you won't ever get breached or have some form of a compromise. We can limit the compromise. We can minimize the compromise, but it's not an impossibility. And it's at that point that all this other stuff matters. A, because it's going to tell us how we're going to respond. And B, it's going to provide detailed information on your efforts as an organization to take this seriously and to be a good steward of that data. And that is worth a lot. That's, that's an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Yeah. Well said. You like the, uh, you, you, the, 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 I wish I could quote some of the stuff you say because you have. <laughs> it's in your book, though. I'm sure, right? I, I, yeah, I mean, it's I I truly live this stuff, Brian. I mean, yeah, I, I'm, yeah. I'm I'm and I'm finding, I'm listening to people, and I'm I'm talking to them, and I'm I'm seeing what's going on, and I, I and it, it 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 you know, it's a big misunderstanding, it's a misconception. People still don't quite get what all of this is about. And well, and, and we're trying way. and talking, but we're not talking right. We're not <laughs> somehow that message isn't getting through to the people that we need yeah. to hear it, you know, and what so I'm trying to figure out how to shape that because I need what your computer, what, what your desktop, your laptop, employee owned assets. Um, what are you allowed to do on that? Right. Um, you know, that's got to be written somewhere. What what you're you know, you, you can do this, but you can't do this. And then even branch it out to um, to one of the more the easier policies is, is your social media policy. Maybe, right. you know, you have marketing people working on the social media end of things, um, but that makes sure that you're encompassing all social media. Don't don't sit there and, and be selective. It, it just just have a blanket social media policy that's going to protect the company. And um, you know what? If, if I'm having a conversation or we just got a new client, don't go and, and blab about it on social media, even personally. So it extends right. outside, and, and you want to have that. Those again, not not a lot to write, but just have that in place and get a signature on it. Yeah, you gotta, because a lot of folks just don't think about it, right? And if you just tell them that that's how you want them to behave with it, then then they will. They they just need the guidance. They don't. They just don't. It doesn't cross their mind, right? Because social media is a common thing, and we don't look at that as an evil. We look at that as a communication tool, right? So people are embracing that. They're they're sharing all kinds of things of their lives. Okay, you know that's a conversation for another podcast. But you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's you know it's it's not it's they're just not thinking i don't think people yeah. mean to do anything wrong they're not trying to be malicious most of the time it's just they don't really understand you know i did a a, a seminar one time on using open source intelligence osint right and i got to tell you uh, I, I'm, I'm still working on reframing some of that message but that was the people in that room i have never had a crowd as engaged as i did that room yeah uh, because when they started seeing what it means when you go to the store and you buy some fancy new camera or some something or another for your child or your whatever, you know, any of these new things, these internets of things, right? These little devices yep. and yep. You just jack them in and they're online. 
I can go to Google and search a web page. And if it happens to be the administration page of that device and it's not set up correctly, I mean, I'm in all day long and I mean, I'm demonstrating it real time. Like there and people are freaking like they see now they understand people don't think like, I'm sorry, but cybersecurity as well as many other things in the, in the world of business, but it's chess, right? You got to think about what's happening. Six moves down. Think like a hacker. Right. What's the hacker doing? They're just doing a little thing right here. But six steps down, that little thing is going to pay off. So what is that six steps down and how do we stop that process? And I think to kind of touch upon the 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 policies is we just talked about social social media policies. You look at you look at the terms of service for for TikTok. I mean, that thing is just pages and pages and pages no one's reading that right so it's like but you've you've agreed to it you've you've accepted those terms uh and so your your business should function not to that level obviously but but have that in place have that policy in place so so you're protecting your own at the policy that people can't just go to any social media platform unless it's authorized right because somebody needs to read that agreement as the organization and take acceptance of it and say it's okay guys we can all click okay with safety and know this is not going to do anything against our 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 overall mission right we're we're, we're doing good or we're doing bad stay away yep which is what you're seeing on the news right it is you know the government and the states and then they're banning tiktok why well because they read the agreement (laughs) they're, they're not liking it so much anymore right so no. I, I think that's we're going to hear more of that. Um, oh, yeah. That, that's not over yet. No. But, no. And it's not going to just be TikTok. I mean, you know, it won't stop with them. No. There's many other tools that will come to be that will be the same problem. Yeah. Chat GPT is another one. of them. I mean, yeah. Oh, yeah. As yeah. great as it is, it's, you know, my goodness. Have some policies around that. You don't want your organization data hitting the, the net. I mean, that'd be a bad thing. Yep. Um, and then even on your your wireless network, have an acceptable use policy for your employees. I mean, you you have those captive portals. I mean, just 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 keep those reminders out there. Um, and and the key here is is documentation. And and there's, you can do it online. Keep it online, or or but it's got to be accessible. Make it accessible to everybody. Don't hide it. I mean, this is something that um, right. you know the more people that have access to it, the the collaborative input from a team of people. Your employees are um, that that's an invaluable resource that's free. <laughs> I mean, so, Absolutely. you know, I, I think that um, even in your your employee handbook, I mean, we're, they're constantly things are constantly changing. And there's there's you know, if, if you don't have um, an HR department, I mean, we, we outsource some of our HR to, to a, a vendor, but mm-hmm. we also have a vendor management policy that that does diligence on that vendor as well. Right. So we, you know, our, our vendor management policies are um, which which some of our clients do have um, and they, they perform annual diligence on on their uh, they do third party risk assessments for these yep. people. But, but a, lot, a lot of companies don't. And, and it's, you know, so we our job is to bring it up and make the recommendations and, and kind of stress the importance of it. That's all we could do, though, until you actually want to own it and, and, and get started, get the process started. Um, you know, it, it's on you. I think, you know, uh, like FTC safeguards, the regulations, party assessment kind of stuff, right? Well, not the vulnerability assessments for your information, but I'm saying your vendors, you need to be getting some form of security assessment from them as well. And, 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 And look, you're right. There's not a lot you can do about a company and what they're doing with their security, except for choose to do business with them or not. And in some cases, you don't have much choice. You have to because of what industry in your block. But right. it's still the, the awareness, knowing, okay, maybe looking at it from the same perspective. So we need to kind of figure out how we can further mitigate that. And again, it's about that, hey, due diligence. I'm, I can prove I'm trying. I'm trying to talk to these people. Are that in industries, things like SOC 2 certifications and that kind of stuff for some of these major vendors where they can just get that because that's that provides the evidence, right? If they can say they're SOC yeah. 2 certified, you're done. You don't have to have anything else. And so, you know, I'm not sitting here to certifications or anything else. I'm just saying right. us as an organization, we're looking at moving in that direction, right? Because we just want to be able to say, look, it's done. Don't worry about it. We're following PCI and NIST and all the other different protocols. But I want to have that just we're done, right? And so if we can get more businesses to do that, that would be better. 
Well, to what you mentioned earlier about FTC, I mean, they, they had those, that, that act was in place years ago. Uh, they're yes. seeing that they need to make change and, and incorporate this into these um, businesses that are required to follow these elements. And they made the changes for a reason. And so, so when there's a specific need or a vertical where you see that, that need for change happening, it's easier to have that conversation, right? Because, oh, there's a right. deadline here. It's in the sand. This sure. is it. Now right? there's pressure. Right. Exactly. So you would try to have that same conversation with that same client a year ago or two years ago before they, it, it, it's a lot harder. It is. But but the funny thing, Brian, is is you got stories. I got stories. We all know people and have heard stories of many companies that the thousands of dollars and, and still don't spend any money to put in controls through like wire fraud or, you know, business yep. email. And, 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 and so it, it's I, I, again, it's a, it's about framing the message the right way so that they can get it and understand it, because I think if they if they if they truly understand it these are not stupid people like the, you know these are folks running companies like they yeah. you know i mean some of them might be but most of them are intelligent folks yeah. right like they yeah. know what they're doing <laughs> and so if you can just get them to know and understand it they'll they'll get it and they'll want to do something about that and, and yeah part so of that's I, I think that should be a conversation if you're if you're um if you have outsourced it that's what the three of us do we own uh we're MSPs. We, we are outsourced IT for small businesses across you know the, the, the globe here. And I think part of our conversations with our clients should be, let's talk about your budget for 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 you know the the, the coming year. And okay, here's what I see in your industry. Here's what's trending. Here's what we need to do. Here's where we need to be. And here's ballpark costs on on getting you to to that level. So it doesn't come as a, a shock when you sit down and say, okay, you got to spend you know three grand a month now. You, you're having conversations, put that budget in place. You know what? Maybe there's no, there's, there's, you know, we're not, we're not spending money, um, you know, on, on hardware for another two years. Let's, let's take whatever you had allocated there. Let's put it here and let's, let's tighten up the infrastructure. Let's get some policies in, in, in place. It's you know, whatever it is, but have that conversation. Right. right. Well, and that's where it becomes important. You know, we're closing up here, so I'll just end yep. with one last little tidbit if I might, but the, the, the most important part of all of this is to get a good solid assessment, right? Because you don't want to spend money fixing a problem you don't have. And, and when it comes to this, there's a lot of places you can spend money. There's a lot of places you can do different things. But if you get a good true assessment and you can you can manage and see where where are the higher impact, higher risk activities, right? Let's get rid of those first. That's where you want to focus because I get it. You got budgets and money's not endless. It's not on trees and we only got so much and okay, we can go a year without bank. Gives us a next step amount. Spend it wise. Start at the high risk stuff and then work your way down. Good point. Mm-hmm. All right, guys. Well, thank you. This was great. Thanks. Very informative. It's good information. We'll be, uh, we'll be back at it next week. I was glad to be back, guys. Sorry to yeah, good to see you, Dave. Now all good. I was missing y'all. Absolutely. Good to see. See you guys next week. You too. All right. Have fun.